Hey guys, it's Mr. Vince, and I hope you all have a great day. I am actually a bit sorry for not making a video over the past few days. I haven't really had a lot of video ideas for you guys, so I ended up making another video for today. Today's video is about live streaming, as you saw by the title, and I decided to talk about it because I know for a fact some of you are a bit too curious about my live streaming. So, I am much more interested in live streaming than making videos nowadays, and that sounds a little bit surprising because originally I would be interested in making videos more than live streams. So I have been live streaming over the past three years. I started live streaming on July 6, 2021. Yeah, to my surprise, I still live stream, and I can't believe I have evolved over the past few years with live streaming. Originally, I live streamed on my iPad, and it was horrible. I'm not gonna lie. Live streaming on iOS just felt like a nightmare. Eventually, I moved to live streaming on my Android phone, and no, it's not the phone I have today. I actually live stream on an old phone I got, and I had it for a few years, but I no longer have it as of 2023. But I did use it for live streaming as well as screen mirroring because I used to live stream on my old phone while also having my iPad connected to my phone. And I did this until December 2021 when I finally got my hands on my first ever phone. And I still have it today. I regularly use it for live streaming and making videos, but I actually decided to kind of complain about my live streaming because even though my live streams have been phenomenal, I have been suffering from a lot of issues with my live streaming. So normally I would live stream on my phone and honestly live streaming on my phone is very tedious. It's even more difficult than live streaming on PC. Despite the fact that it's actually easier to set up live streams on your phone considering that you don't have a lot of options on mobile unlike PC. On PC, you do have the best streaming app, in my opinion, which is called OBS Studio. And on mobile, it's up to you. There are apps like Prison Live Studio and Streamlabs. I actually use the Streamlabs app to live stream because I have been used to using it over the past three years, and it's still my favorite mobile app for live streaming. Although Prism Live is definitely a better choice, I just couldn't really do anything about it. Yeah, there was no face cam on it, so I ended up not using Prism Live, sorry. But Streamlabs, it did help me out. I didn't really have a lot of issues with it until December. And that's when Streamlabs decided to roll a little update that caused me to make new live streams whenever I try to live stream an existing stream. So it was a bit problematic. And yeah, I eventually fixed the issue by downloading an older version of the Streamlabs app. And I can't really tell you guys how much stress I have been going through considering all those years were just wasted on mobile streaming. It's a pain. Back in 2021, all the way to 2023, I actually live streamed entirely on my phone. And even though it was such a fun time, it was painful. The performance dipped so hard and I just couldn't really bear it. You guys could definitely watch back and you would notice the lag. It was just bonkers. But after I got the PS5, the performance started to skyrocket and I was now able to play the game fully at full graphics without any issues. And yes, I do get some FPS dips because Roblox is CPU dependent, but for the most part, it wasn't that bad anymore. The PS5 was great, but now I actually ran into another issue. How am I going to live stream PS5 content? At first I was like, I could use the PS5 live streaming feature, but it came with some limitations, including the lack of using face cam, as well as a horrible microphone on the PS5 controller. I'm sorry to say it, but I'm just being honest there, it is actually bad. So I had to figure out a way to screen mirror my PS5 to my phone, and eventually I did find a way with an app called PS Play. And at first it worked really well. However, I did end up running into internet connection issues as well as some latency issues because as you can see, sometimes the 
frames get skipped and it's a bit problematic. Although this issue was still pretty consistent, I did actually end up configuring some options to prevent further issues including crashing and internet connection failures. And if you guys had actually seen some of my live streams, like my Fortnite stream, you might have noticed that I had ran into a lot of internet connection issues, as well as crashes in Fortnite, as well as Roblox. But eventually I did fix up the problem with Roblox and Fortnite, so I can now properly live stream on those two games again. Now, some of you might be like, why weren't you using the PS Remote Play app? Well, yes, there is an app made by Sony, but I didn't use it because Sony, unfortunately, doesn't allow people to live stream nor record on the app itself. Since the fact that the screen mirroring would fail to work, and I'm not entirely sure why. PS Play at least allows you to do that, but not the PS Remote app. Yeah, I know, it sounds a bit weird, but I think it's to prevent copyright, but I'm not too sure. So now I'm kind of in a little struggle. I had to lower the quality of the screen mirroring and even then it's still extremely bad. So after some time, I decided that I would actually try to get a PC. Now I already have a PC, which is actually at my desk, but I also want to let you guys know that I haven't really been capable of streaming on my PC. Because the problem with my PC is that it's particularly used for coding, it's not really for gaming, it's not really for streaming. I have been running into rendering issues with it over the past few years, so I couldn't really stream on the computer. Back in 2022, I actually attempted to live stream on the PC many times, especially back in November of that year. And even though live streaming was possible, it was extremely laggy eventually, and it was just horrible. I hated the experience. Although it was fun to mess around with different layouts and stuff, but I couldn't really tolerate it. So eventually I had to go back to streaming on my phone in January of 2023 because PC was a pain for me, even though I was able to set up my live streams properly. It just didn't feel right for me. So now I am like, I should get another PC. However, I didn't want to get a gaming PC. Why? Because I already have a PlayStation. Of course, I don't need a gaming PC if I already have a PlayStation. And for me personally, I don't really mind not having a gaming PC. But eventually, I would save some money for one. That would be epic. But since the fact that I already got a PS5, there's probably no incentive of literally just getting, well, a gaming PC. So I opt in to get something called a Blackview MP80. Now there are different MP computers like the 60 and the 200, but I decided to specifically go for the 80 because it felt just right for me. It was relatively cheap and as part of a budget. And not only that, it's pretty convenient. It can definitely run live streams. And I had to watch some videos on the Blackview mini PCs and they work really well. So I was like, Maybe I should actually get myself a Blackview Mini PC. Alright, but with that being said, let me explain some other details. The Blackview MPs are usually relatively cheap. Some are like as low as $100. Others can be as expensive as close to $400. It just depends on which MP you're talking about. So, the Mini PCs are beneficial. The only thing is, they do not have a built-in graphics card. I think you can insert one into the mini PC, but if I were you, I wouldn't do that. Especially for a small PC that can't really allow graphics cards like NVIDIA graphics cards. Yeah, that's where the trouble begins with gaming. But with that being said, the mini PCs do come in with decent CPUs, or central processing units for those who are into computers. The CPUs are really beneficial because for one, Roblox can actually be tolerated with the mini PCs, considering that Roblox is usually CPU dependent. So if I go over to performance stats, as you can see, I have a lot more milliseconds with CPU than I do with GPU, since Roblox isn't really dependent on GPU. And that's because Roblox's engine is usually dependent on CPU. 
So if you're wondering why your performance still sucks even though you have a better GPU or a graphics card, that's mainly because Roblox just depends on central processing instead of graphics processing. So there's that right there. Now if you're talking about games like Fortnite, yeah, that's where it comes to play. I actually did see some videos of people trying to play Fortnite on the mini PCs and Fortnite doesn't run too well, even at low settings. So it's not really optimal for gaming, but is it good for streaming? Absolutely. Fortunately, OBS Studio does allow for streaming with CPU usage, so streaming on the mini PC is definitely more than possible. It's feasible to stream on a mini PC that is only like $200, and I'll be honest, I think that is a nice little birthday gift for me. So I felt like I should actually live stream on a mini PC, so that way I could give my honest thoughts on PC streaming. Although I will still stream PS5 gameplay because you can actually use a capture card to connect your PS5 to your mini PC as long as you have either a TV or a monitor because you do need an HDMI port to connect the capture card to the TV or monitor. So please keep that in mind. Now do you need a capture card? Well for the most part, probably not. I mean we already have the PS Remote Play app on Windows so you can use that instead. You can at least see the gameplay on the PS Remote Play app on PC, and you are able to actually live stream it, so that's actually pretty neat. But all things considered, I love live streaming on mobile. It feels like a breeze, but you don't have a lot of options when it comes to streaming on mobile. I will most likely try to get myself a mini PC because I am kind of desperate to properly live stream, and at this point, I'm probably more interested in live streaming than making videos. So if you guys were wondering why I haven't made a lot of videos recently, it's just the fact that I haven't really been too consistent with video content and that I was just much more fascinated with live streaming. Some YouTubers don't really make a lot of videos, but they do a lot of live streaming. So this channel is mainly for live streaming and not for video making. But yeah, back in 2022 and 2023, I made a lot more videos than live streams. So this year, I want to really focus on live streaming and not just videos because you know videos just don't always feel right yes some of you may not be able to watch my live streams and it's perfectly fine but i really want to live stream more and i don't want to always live stream on my phone my brother has been watching my live streams some of my family members have been watching my live streams my friends have been watching my live streams I just want to be able to improve and evolve. I can't devolve and just go back to life from on my iPad. Am I right? Still though, I want to thank you all for the incredible support over the years. I had a lot of new fans because of live streaming. So personally, I think getting a mini PC just to stream would be awesome. Because you can definitely see the remote play is kind of trash. It's a pain and it doesn't even feel right. I'm going to be honest. The remote play isn't necessarily for streaming, it's more for just gaming outside of your house or something like that, you know? But it's okay. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Mr. Vince, and I hope you have a great day.